What is the main cause of scoliosis? When understanding scoliosis, we know scoliosis has many different condition types associated with it and many different causes associated and also treatment needs. When we look at the most common diagnosed type of scoliosis is something called idiopathic scoliosis. And the remaining 20% are other types of scoliosis that may have known causes. But the most common type of scoliosis is something called idiopathic. Idiopathic scoliosis is where there's no clearly associated single cause of scoliosis meaning the scoliosis is occurring for an unknown reason. Idiopathic scoliosis means unknown cause. Idiopathic scoliosis is thought to be a multifactorial problem, meaning it can be caused by a combination of factors. And there's no rule saying that one patient, a patient can have multiple factors that's associated with their causation. Anything from genetics to development to growth rates to hormones to even uh, infant to traumas, the different issues occurring in this growth or at juvenile phases. Idiopathic scoliosis is the main type of scoliosis to be affecting children and adults. So the majority of cases, patients with scoliosis, we can't tell you what's happening. The most common age of diagnosis of idiopathic scoliosis is in the adolescent stage between 10 and 18 years of age. But there are other types of scoliosis cases that we do know that could be associated with a known cause. Now, patients could have different different factors associated. It means there is no rule that's saying that somebody can have some congenital scoliosis and some idiopathic scoliosis. There's no rule that says that. People are allowed to walk in with more than one thing. Now, the most common type we see in adult stages outside of idiopathic scoliosis is degenerative scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is caused when something causes the spine to shift, normally a young adult, and it's left uncorrected. And this uncorrected causes the spine to deteriorate or degenerate over time. In fact, a lot of times this would be called a natural age-related spinal degeneration. But it's not natural or normal for the spine to degenerate, and it's normally excessively degenerating in the area of the scoliosis. So it's because if it was natural and normal, the whole spine would be degenerating in the same way. But you see in the area of this the degenerated uh, scoliosis, the spine has an excessive degeneration generation. The most common area this tends to occur is in the lumbar spine. Neuromuscular scoliosis is another type of scoliosis that's normally caused by the presence of a larger neuromuscular condition, something like cerebral palsy, Marfan syndrome, muscular dystrophy, spina bifida, neurofibromatosis, Ehlers Downer syndrome. These are all syndromes that normally affect the connective tissues of the body, and they normally lead to either laxity or contractures. Both these things could be associated with the causation of scoliosis. Now, interesting enough, even though we, th we know what's causing the scoliosis, most neuromuscular cases are treated like idiopathic cases, which I'll explain in a second on why that is. Congenital scoliosis is another type of scoliosis that can occur, and this normally happens at birth, at birth, and this is a result of a malformed vertebra within the spine itself that develops in utero. The, one of the spinal vertebras will come out shaped improperly. Instead of being shaped like a square or a rectangle, it's shaped more like a triangle, and that would cause a curve to occur right there in that, in that location. And the last type is traumatic scoliosis. Now, traumatic scoliosis can be from what we understand as trauma, like falling or injuries or car accidents or things that it's a significant trauma experience in the spine, but it can also be internal traumas like compression fractures or some type of something affecting the strength of the spine leading to the a compression fracture or a fracture of the spine or some kind of tumor or, or disease that's affecting the strength of the spine, which can also lead to scoliosis. Despite the type of scoliosis of the, uh, of the causation or the type, does scoliosis worsen? And the answer is yes. Almost always, scoliosis is a progressive condition. Scoliosis ranges uh, wide in severity from mild to moderate to severe to very severe. And it's very easy for a mild curve to progress to severe stages if left untreated, especially during growth, because growth is the number one trigger. And the real, the only way to stop or counteract the progressive nature of scoliosis is to be proactive. And understanding that growth is the number one progression, we know patients that have not reached skeletal maturity yet, meaning they're still in their adolescent stage and they're still growing, are the most susceptible to progression. Because since growth is unpredictable and growth is, can be rapid at times and slow at other times, we can't predict the, how much a curve will progress we, don't, we can't tell you when the curve will stop, and we can't tell you, you know, what, well, how big it's going to be if you leave it untreated. So it's an unknown progression. 
but we, even though we don't know how it progresses or how much it's gonna progress, we do know how to effectively treat scoliosis. And understanding that we, even in the majority of cases, we don't know what causes it, we still can treat it properly. Even with idiopathic scoliosis, not knowing the cause. Like I mentioned, in neuromuscular cases, we know the cause associated with scoliosis. If we were to find the scoliosis in the adolescent stage, let's say, the majority of curves are diagnosed 25 degrees or greater, meaning they're already a structural component to the scoliosis. And let's say we were to cure that person's neuromuscular condition, the person's structural scoliosis will still be there, meaning we would still have to deal with the structure of the spine. Whatever causes the scoliosis causes not only a small curve that remains there and it progresses slowly during the juvenile years and that progresses rapidly during growth as a result of the curve being there. So it's growth that leads to the structural curve progressing. So therefore, eliminating the cause doesn't cure or reduce the curve. You have to deal with the structural curves. It's kind of like the way I like to explain it. It's kind of like an earthquake. Even though we don't understand the complete ideology of idiopathic scoliosis, we do understand what causes earthquakes, right? The plates shift, right? And that causes uh, the ground to rumble and then the buildings kind of collapse and it affects the structure of these buildings. Well, if I were to realign those plates, what caused the earthquake to occur doesn't necessarily mean your buildings can go back straight again. You still have to rebuild the building. And this is also true when it comes to scoliosis, that regardless of whatever the cause would be, even regardless of if we know it or don't know it, we have to deal with the structural component of the scoliosis because it's the structure that causes the curve to progress over time. So even though the most common type of scoliosis is something called idiopathic, meaning we don't know what causes it, we know we can still treat scoliosis. Even though scoliosis is progressive, we know we can still treat scoliosis. And even though scoliosis has become severe, we know we can still treat scoliosis. So therefore, no matter what's going on with your curve, treating scoliosis is by far the most important thing. I still think it's more important to treat the curve than the necessary understanding the cause of it because by the time we see curves, they're already structural. They're already, the curve itself is taking on its own identity. So addressing the curve at its core is by far the most important thing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.